27-year-old Shani Sumter was found in her car behind an abandoned house with a fatal gunshot wound, leaving her family devastated. The man suspected of killing her is her boyfriend, 27-year-old Peter Gales who maintains his innocence. I'm sorry for all this. I didn't do this. I'm sorry. I know my son is, 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 didn't do this. I know it in my heart. I didn't raise a monster. They had their problems, don't get me wrong, all couples do, but I know my son is innocent and it's gonna be proven because he has an alibi. What happened to Shani Sumter and who would take her life and dispose of her in such a cruel way? Welcome to Viral Crimes. Subscribe and hit the bell icon for more stories. This story takes us to Mobile, Alabama. Mobile, Alabama is a vibrant coastal city with a rich history and culture. It is known for its role as a major port city, as well as its historical significance as the site of the Battle of Mobile Bay during the Civil War. The city prides itself on delicious seafood, beautiful parks and gardens, and its famous Mardi Gras celebrations. 27-year-old Shani Sumter was a bride and loving single mother who dedicated her life to her family. Born on May 24, 1989 in Mobile, Alabama, Shanice was raised in a close-knit and supportive family. She worked as an insurance adjuster at Pilot, and despite her busy schedule, she always made time for her loved ones, particularly her son Catonio King Jr., who was the center of her world. In her free time, Shanice enjoyed shopping, doing hair and experimenting with new styles. Sadly, on May 9, 2017, Shanice's life was tragically cut short. Around 6.25 p.m. Shanice's body was discovered in a car parked behind an abandoned house in the 7000 block of Bay Road. She was discovered with a pink towel covering her face. Inside the car, her purse and phone were hidden under her body, along with a 38 caliber handgun that was also located inside the vehicle. Um, officers uh, responded to the 7000 block of Bay, Bay Avenue area in reference to a female being down inside of the vehicle upon arrival. They arrived, they found a young female inside of the vehicle down, at which time a uh, medical was called on the scene. She was pronounced dead at the scene. identify her as being Shanice Sumter, uh, 27 years of age. Now, as far as, as this being a bit of an emotional thing, her family was was at the house, the area where her body was found earlier today. They had the child, the child was crying, the mom was crying, cousins were crying. How how uh, emotional and serious is this kind of incident? Well, it's, it's a very serious incident because now you, ha you have a loved one that's gone, someone's daughter, someone's sister, um, they're, they're gone. Um, for whatever reason, for no reason, uh, apparently at all, life has been taken. And when we just ask that um, everyone just pray for the family of the deceased. Shanice's 18-year-old sister reported not having seen her sister since May 8. She told investigators that her sister was going to Pensacola to look at getting a new job, and her boyfriend, Peter, was going with her. On the evening of May 9, investigators attempted to get in touch with her boyfriend, but he did not answer the phone. They were able to locate him at his sister's Saraland apartment the next day. Peter went with detectives to police headquarters to answer questions, and it was there that he admitted to riding with Shanice to Pensacola on May 8. He said they stopped at a drive through restaurant in Saraland on the way back to Mobile. He said that his smartphone was linked to the car audio, and he got a phone call from a female companion. He said this phone call caused an argument between him and Shanice which resulted in an altercation. He alleged that Shanice grabbed his weapon in the car and he managed to get the gun away from her. He said that as she rushed at him while he was driving, he lifted his right arm and the gun went off. Peter stated that he reached over Shanice and leaned her passenger seat back. He then drove to a home on Pleasant Valley Road and waited there for about 20 minutes. He continued along Dauphin Island Parkway and parked the car behind an abandoned house with Shanice's lifeless body inside. He claimed to have been picked up from Bay Road by someone, and then he spent the remainder of the day at a friend's house close to Moffat Road after that. He admitted to having turned Shanice's telephone off. After he left the location he then began sending text messages to her phone, inquiring about her whereabouts, in an effort to make it look like he wasn't involved in her disappearance. Peter Gales was arrested and held on $200,000 bond. 
And we're learning more about the man charged with the murder of a woman he had a romantic relationship with. Also, the sister of Shanice Sumter is speaking out. As News 5's Ashley Knight reports, she says Peter Gales should have been locked up before he put a gun to Sumter's head. I'm sorry for all this. I didn't do this. I'm sorry. Peter Gales was arrested and charged with the murder of Shanice Sumter. She was found dead from an apparent gunshot wound to the head, sitting in a car on Bay Road. However, some would argue Gales was meant to be behind bars long before Wednesday. According to the Metro Jail Log, there was a warrant out for Gales' arrest on drug charges that dates back to 2011. He would have been arrested. My sister would have never been with him. She would have been been gone to Jacksonville, working, making her money. But according to Officer Donald Wallace, Gales isn't the only one who's eluded police for years at a time. In fact, he says it happens quite often. That particular subject may have left Mobile, may have left the state of Alabama, and may live somewhere else, somewhere else and may not have contact uh, with law enforcement or any agency. But he says officers will first exhaust all resources. One is uh, through you guys, through, through television, the news media, through the papers, magazines, so forth and so on, even billboards that, that are around in the city. They'll also partner with other agencies and task forces and the FBI, and they'll turn to social media. But after so much time passes, they have to move on to other cases, which are coming in on a daily basis. And after that, it's just a matter of when the suspect's luck runs out. It's just a matter of time before maybe they come back to the area and they're found or they're picked up by another agency in another state or city. Even though Peter admitted to killing Shanice, his mother still believes her son is innocent. The defendant was in a relationship with Ms. Sumter and the um, what I told the court today was that the defendant had shot her in the head and she was found inside of a vehicle and he has admitted to that shooting. Because prior to this, Shanice called me and said he had hit her. Three officers, Sarah Lynn officers, came to visit them. She had no marks on her at all, and she wouldn't even give, his, give them his name. So she was in such a threat. It seemed like she would have gave him his name then. She told me, Mama, be quiet, because I'm fine. She didn't have a, if y'all contacted the police, she didn't have a scratch on her. I'm not speaking ill of her, because I loved her too. They had their problems, but on the night, my son has an alibi. He has an alibi and nobody even checked it. He was on Moffitt Road. I know my son is, 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 didn't do this. I know it in my heart. I didn't raise a monster. They had their problems. Don't get me wrong. All couples do. But I know my son is innocent. And it's going to be proven because he has an alibi. Nobody's wanting to check his alibi. So on Moffitt Road, where, where was he? He was on Moffitt Road at, at some, this girl house. Okay. Some, Police some had already went over there and seen that that's where he was. And on the 9th, I got phone records where I called him all day. He takes me because And I picked him up on Moffitt at 721 on Moffitt Road. They said he responded to a shooting at 625. There's no way I went down the Bay Road that he could be back at there and looking clean to his mother and being I can tell when something's wrong with my son. There was nothing wrong with my son. He was later found guilty of murder and sentenced to life in prison. Friends and family gathered together to hold a vigil to honor Shanice's life. The community came together to show their support for her family. Dozens of people came to a vigil for Shanice Sumter outside the James Seals Community Center. That's where we find News 5's Alan Carter. And tonight was not just about grief, but also talking about a painful issue in domestic violence, which has claimed the life of another young woman. These are the moments you simply don't prepare for. That simply means that we don't know when our life is going to end or how it's going to end. Speaking in past tense about someone you love that person and who should still be here with you. She was full of peace, full of happiness, full of jokes. That's the situation everyone here dealt with tonight, sharing hands and grief over the loss of Shanice Sumter. She don't deserve what had happened to her. Her body found last week near this abandoned building. Police say it was her boyfriend who shot her in the head. So far this, I didn't do this. Just 27 years old, two weeks before turning 28. The green represents her birthday. Happy birthday to Happy birthday to you. The purple for domestic violence. Please don't ignore it. 
Don't ignore it. If you hear it, report it. Don't say it's not my business. Report it. Tell somebody. Tears brought by the tragedy of it all. I that you would pray for this young man. Thinking of a nine-year-old now without a mother. That baby don't deserve it around no father. He don't deserve that. They just show you how they, the devil worked with that guy. He ain't care about that baby. Unprepared for this moment. So why is a natural question. But tonight, one, they want to remember two, who, three, give God a clap of praise. What happened to Shanice was a tragedy. She never thought that when she asked her boyfriend to accompany her on a trip for a new job, he would take her life. That was the ultimate betrayal by someone she trusted. Her life mattered and she should be here, and now her child will have to grow up without a mother due to this senseless act of violence. My condolences to her friends and family. May you continue to heal from your pain and one day find peace. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.